I bought a 15,000 square foot warehouse to turn into my dream YouTube studio. It's a massive project with more than its fair share of setbacks and mishaps, but we're figuring it out one step at a time. In my previous videos in this series, we framed out a merch room, built a set, built a massive green screen, and a whole lot more. Now, in this video, with a little help from my friends, we're gonna continue turning this abandoned warehouse into my dream studio. The Merch Room, a project that was a top priority from the moment we moved in here. We are building a giant room within a room to keep all the merchandise dry, dust-free, climate controlled. Unfortunately, we ran into a little bit of a logistical speed bump with the local government, if you know what I mean. And that put the project on hold for like 120 days, maybe more. But all of that is cleared up now. We have the complete go-ahead. And finally, it's time to get back to work on the Merch Room. Alrighty, it's the job that no one's been looking forward to, but it's time for insulation and drywall on this room we've built here. Luckily, we rented this drywall hoist because we got big 12-foot sheets of drywall to lift up to the ceiling. Let's go. Nick and Nikki were working on the insulation while we were gone at Home Depot, and they're complaining, saying it's hard work. <laughs> so, we're gonna try and hang sheets of drywall up first and then place the insulation on top. So, that's the new plan. If you'd like to learn a bunch of new skills that'll be helpful throughout your whole life, I'd highly recommend buying an old rundown warehouse and trying to convert it into a YouTube studio. Who would have thought I would ever rent a drywall hoist? It's the 10 Hundred Life Skills Boot Camp. Here's a bunch of new heating and cooling equipment. Got this whole place with central air. We got a new industrial heater for this room. Not cheap, ladies and gentlemen, but we need it. Now it's gonna get turned on for the very first time, and it is hot in here. This is Ty, the most recent hire to Team 10 Hundred, and he's quite handy at many a thing that is very useful around the new warehouse. Mudding, taping, mudding and taping. Getting dirty and getting shit done. This merch room we built is 20 feet by 48 feet and just involves an insane amount of mudding and taping. Hey guys, guess what? Guess who's here? Freaking Make With Miles is here. He's gonna be building like a photo booth or something for me. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> He's a maker channel. He makes awesome things out of wood. Actually, I met him because he made this like super epic statue out of one of my characters. He spent a million years making it and then he sent it to me to paint it. Super awesome video. You can watch it right here. But today he's making a photo booth for my brand new YouTube studio and I am excited. So honored to be here. We're gonna go to the hardware store and get some wood. Very curious about this weird idea he has proposed. To the Home Depot. Go, go. We're on a mission for lumber. I think the plywood is straight ahead. Some kind of strange ancient hieroglyphics that no man has been able to decipher except for one man. I have the code. We might as well go like with the fixed stuff. Okay, Miles is having trouble. The cart is winning. I'm not a great driver. When it comes to Miles versus the wood, always What's bet winning? on the wood. Not check. No, it, looks, it looks good. We're basically gonna build like a pallet. Wood mission accomplished. Let's go. Okay, we're back at the studio. Time to get this wood unloaded and start cutting. Sanding it. We're gonna build this thing. Let's do it. Nikki? Yeah. How are you feeling about the room so far? Really good. I did a lot of these walls. I've never drywalled before, and don't tell Peter, I think I'm gonna leave and become a professional drywall mud and taper. Oh, oh, you thought the mudding and taping section was over? Oh no, I told you, we had a lot of mudding and taping to do. Plus there was the sanding. I couldn't even film the sanding. I did not want all that drywall dust in my expensive camera. Wear the sand and paint. Get my Jordan posters on the wall here. Okay, we're about to make an upgrade that I am probably the most excited about and is probably the most necessary. The reason this camera angle is so low is to show you guys these lights that are behind me. They're the lights that came with this place. They're very yellow, they're fluorescent, they're ugly. But I went ahead, I got these. These are super accurate lights from American Green Lights. They have like a super high CRI, which is a measurement of color accuracy. As an artist who paints and as a YouTuber, who films having incredibly accurate lighting is so dope to me. I was super excited to find this company and they even did something a little extra special for me. They made me custom lights from scratch that are set to exactly 5600 Kelvin so they would perfectly match my professional video lights. Okay, for you video nerds out here, this is a test. My camera is set to daylight white balance and this is the type of lighting that we're getting. We're gonna install these lights, come back to this and do this exact same shot. Damn, 
LEDs, baby. So this is one of the old lights. Conveniently, they all have a plug on them. So we will be taking the plug out of it and hooking it up to the new lights. Take these off. Those things are absolutely disgusting. This is the new fixture. Black goes to black. Tie that together. Make you say hello to the internet. The internet. And then we just gotta put these four screws in. Oh, I forgot to take the freaking instructions out of there. Make sure you take the instructions out. Hold on, wait. I'm gonna get it all, don't worry. You realize it was only four screws I had done. Yeah, but this is quick. And la, la. I, I got it all. I'm so proud of you. Here's a representation of what it looks like on the ceiling. All right, since you've seen me do the process, now you're gonna see me just do a bunch of them really quickly. I'm gonna start working out of the lift. It might seem nerdy, but this is one of the most exciting upgrades to my new studio. The first light has gone in. That's the old light, this is the new light. I don't know if you can see the color temperature difference, but a lot cleaner. Not only are these lights more accurate, but they're also brighter. If you're an artist and you haven't given much thought to your lighting setup, I think you'd be shocked at what a different super accurate lighting can make. Okay, and then this is the after shot. We have installed the lights. My camera is still set to the exact same white balance settings. Daylight, white balance. 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 And as you can see, the fluorescent yellow is gone. This lighting is so much better. American Green Lights even did a full 3D CGI light model of my warehouse. Like I said, they custom made these lights for me. So if you're an artist, if you're a woodworker, if you have a shop, you these lights are super accurate. I'd highly recommend these lights. They're not too expensive. And on top of that, American Green Lights reached out to me and gave me the code 1000 where you can get 10% off on their website. Mmm, this turned out sick. We even got some extra ones for the workshop area over there. Okay, let's keep this going. Look at how organized Miles is. He has all the pieces of wood cut out and marked in their own little piles. But now I get to teach him how to use a nail gun. Hoo -ha! Hopefully we'll nail it. Good one. Yeah! Oh yes, we got some walls getting framed up here. First time framing. This thing is really coming along. It's pretty cool. And we built it so that a pallet jack can move this whole room. It's built on these four by fours, so we can roll this around wherever we want. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is a website where you can build a website and they make it super easy. They have these beautiful templates and all you gotta do is drop your awesome content into their templates and boom, you have a website. I love their e-commerce and through their extensions, you can even do print on demand services to make selling your merch super easy. They also have member exclusive areas, portfolios and galleries and the list goes on. So it's time to have a beautiful website. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com forward slash 1000 for 10% off the first purchase of a website or domain. All right, guys, the next step in the master plan is to up our editing game. So I went ahead and ordered a full on NAS system. My dream is for Nick to be working on the video edit session, doing the raw assembly edit, while I simultaneously am editing, doing the fine tuning and the final adjustments. It would be great if we can work on the same video at the same time or work on separate videos on separate stations, all editing from the same drive. So hopefully this system is gonna be able to allow us to do that. I have a QNAP TVS 872XT. This is an eight bay NAS. I have eight 18 terabyte hard drives for a grand total of 144 terabytes of storage. Son, let's go. I also have these two two terabyte NVMe M.2 Samsung 970 Evo Plus. This is for SSD caching. It's gonna hold all of our most recent used files and hopefully give us the speeds of SSD with the gangster storage of mechanical spinning hard drives. I have a battery backup. This guy has Thunderbolt 3 connections and 10 gigabit ethernet. Now I have to figure out how to put this thing together. So let's up this nest. Someone tells me this is gonna take all day long, troubleshooting and yeah, figuring out what's going on. Don't flip it. I, I wasn't thinking, I was, but was it going to flip it? And then the way you like moved the stuff out of the way, I was like, oh, is he want me to flip it? It's a computer. <laughs> First, we had to install all these Seagate Ironwolf Pro NAS hard drives into the drive slots. That took a while. Last one, baby. Okay. Next, I installed the Samsung M.2 SSDs so we could have some SSD caching. 
You're actually gonna have the fastest connection speeds over Thunderbolt. Yeah. What's up, son? Gnarly. <laughs> I'm quick, dude. Watch this. Watch this. Ready? You can't wait till move thing. Ready? Watch how fast I am. Gone. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, find the power button. Here we go. Okay. Powering up all discs. I'm guessing I'm gonna need to go through a formatting process. Dude, that thing sounds like a transformer. All right, well something tells me this is not gonna be very riveting footage, so I'm gonna go through the long process of making these two machines talk to each other. See you soon. All right, well it took over 24 hours to set up this RAID 5 array of discs in here, but everything is finally set up. I'm gonna move this to the new edit station. This server rack came with the building, and the whole front of house is hardwired through the walls with Cat6 cabling. I was so hyped when I found that out. Okay, so up there is the NAS. We have a battery backup, which gives us about 45 minutes if the power fails for this thing to safely shut itself down. This is the very temporary second editing setup. This will be evolving, but the NAS is uh, officially working. So this is currently our second editing station where Nick edits, but we're using like one of my art tables temporarily. We have this bargain bin Amazon gaming chair that is not proper. What do you mean it's not proper, dude? Look at this. Whoa! Perfect for working. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is our temporary shipping area too until we get that room finished. But the fine folks over at FlexiSpot saw I was doing a YouTube studio build out and said, hey, 1000, we want to swag you out. So they sent me a desk, a chair, some other cool accessories. So let's build this stuff. Yeah! While Nick started putting together the desk, I got to work on the ergonomic chair. Everything was pretty straightforward to put together and the directions were super clear. Now it's time to tear down the old setup, unhook everything, and get this old table out of here. Then we brought in the FlexiSpot desk and started setting up the new edit station. Pretty excited, FlexiSpot sent us this monitor arm for uh, my second monitor, so pretty stoked on that. Over here at Ten Hunt Studios, we're pretty big fans of the one ultra-wide monitor for the timeline, and then a second monitor for video playback. I do love a good desk setup. So this is the second edit station. At the centerpiece here, we have the flexi spot. This is the E7 desk. It can hold like 330 pounds. It has a few memory locations, the up and down sit stand. It's super solid. I love this bamboo top. Huge amount of real estate. It's a super sick desk. Samsung ultra wide here where we have our timeline. We have a 27 inch 4K monitor over here for the playback video. A little Focusrite audio interface. The Cal digit for all of our IO. This is the TS4, so it has uh, four Thunderbolt 4 ports on it. We have the Yamaha 8 inch speakers. We're running this whole thing off of a 2021 MacBook Pro 14 inch, super spec'd out. We use the Logitech MX Master Keys and the MX Master 3 mouse, I believe it's called. And then it's hooked up to the QNAP NAS. We have this very comfortable and ergonomic C7 chair. There's a ton of adjustment points on this. And of course they sent us their monitor stand that also has like a USB port in it. Very sturdy and you can put it in a whole lot of positions. Dude, shout out FlexiSpot. If I'm gonna throw some links down in the description, it's solid. But yeah, very excited about edit station number two. Okay, backdrop time, baby. I was rummaging around in my wood pile and I just found these, which will be awesome. They're not quite long enough, but they will show up perfect on the Polaroid camera. So I just need to cut these down to like 34 inches. And then I have ready-made painting surfaces. When Miles and I were talking about the photo booth, we both agreed it would be cool to have switchable painted backdrops. And since I'm the one-man art department, it's time to get to work. I'm gonna hit these boards with gesso because I ride deep for the gesso gang all day. Gesso gang. I'm using gesso on these panels to have a nice white surface to paint on, to prep and seal the wood, and to have a nice base ground for premium paint adhesion. Hey, howdy, hello, it's 11.30 at night. Miles is leaving on Monday, it is Friday night right now. We're both a little bit more than concerned about the amount of time that he has left. So I helped him sand it. Uh, I'm just about to help him paint the inside of the photo booth. And with our powers combined, we're gonna try and get this photo booth done before he flies home. It's grind time. We're gonna do it. Ooh. 
We called my friend Austin as backup since we were running out of time. He's a YouTuber that specializes in building projects and goes by Redbud Builds on YouTube. You guys should definitely subscribe to him. I'll do the flush trim okay. around the top. Once I get that done, I'll help you with siding. Cool. While Miles and Austin worked on the build, I started on the backdrops. I originally wanted to do more complex pieces for these backdrops, but I just went with gradients so that I would have more time to help Miles finish his project. I am going to prime the roof of the photo booth. It's like a centimeter from the roof. Oh my God! There's like no room. We have primed the roof, and now it is my supreme pleasure to do a spray paint gradient on the roof. Okay, so the gradient roof is more tricky than it may seem. The angle of the roof is so not good for holding a spray can. I'm constantly holding it sideways or even upside down and then the paint doesn't come out. What I'd like to do is be above the roof and spray a gradient out towards the sides. But how do I do that? Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna try and do something. Let's go. I took the scissor lift and tried to get it in the exact right position and then leaned out as far as I could to be able to spray a gradient on this roof. Since I couldn't spray the underside because I would have to hold the can upside down, we decided to paint it this midnight navy. Fortunately, some of the navy seeped onto the front facing trim, so I had to tape everything off so I could respray that trim. Since I still had all my orange and yellow sprays out, I decided to do a late night gradient on this bench that Austin built. I think these nighttime spray paint shots look freaking sick. Wow, my forearm is absolutely covered in orange spray paint. But as the midnight hour hit, I grabbed a white paint pen to add this moon waves design to the pink panel. The next morning we sanded the photo booth down and then primed it white to get ready to be spray painted. It is finally time to spray down the main walls of this photo booth. I'm excited! <laughs> We're both sleep deprived. Yeah. We're both super sleep deprived. Hey, it's a gradient. A gradient. I'll get back to it now. I used an ungodly amount of spray paint on this project, and I ended up having just barely enough grays to actually paint this thing. Next, I sprayed down the door trim pieces with that same orange gradient. There's definitely a color scheme going on here. The merch room. It has been a long and convoluted journey. We framed it, drywalled it, mudded it, taped it, sanded it, vacuumed it, and finally it is time to slap some paint on these walls. It feels like it's been such a long journey, but now we get to transform it into an actual usable space. Finally, let's get painting. excited about painting. You know how much I love to paint. You know, paint is a pretty magical substance. As an artist, I use paint to create lavish worlds and strange characters. But even the process of painting this rough drywall with mud and tape pristine, clean white, absolutely, instantly transformed this space. It was during this step that I knew that this room was actually gonna come together. And it felt so good to finally be at this step.
coat number one. Who's excited for coat number two? Okay, so it was just Amazon Prime Day and everything was on super sale. So I decided to start building my robot army. Let's get these things open. Fight, fight. Jeremiah doing his thing. Billy Bob Jr. Uh, doing a little bit of circular activity. Doing a great job, boys. Every day at 10 a.m., we'll be cleaning the warehouse. Keeping it dust free. Good job, guys. I appreciate the effort. This wall opposite the green screen has tons of pipes and electrical conduit all over it. So I decided to mount sheets of OSB on this wall so I could mount shelves and other organizational stuff. Full wall is up there, it's painted. Now I wanna get this pegboard up on here to really be able to utilize this space. I cut down a couple of two by twos to be able to float this pegboard off of the wall. That way all the pegboard accessories can go into the holes without bumping into the OSB. Okay, now I'm gonna start organizing. I kinda figured this pegboard wall could be for a lot of my video gear and electronics oriented stuff. And then my other pegboard on the other side could be for more of my art supplies and creative equipment. Okay, so we have this big wooden structure right here and we have a lot of stickers that fans send us. And I've never quite known what to do with these stickers, but now I think I'm gonna turn this whole wooden structure into a giant sticker wall. If you have any stickers you want us to add to our sticker wall, you can send it to the PO box listed at the bottom of my website. But for now, we're gonna start the very beginnings of this sticker wall. So we have a lot of these Hello My Name Is things, so we're gonna go ahead and sign some of these. Come on, Greg! When you've been hanging drywall for a week, doing a fun task like a sticker wall really hits the spot. So yeah, now that I actually know what to do with you guys' stickers, feel free to send us some. The PO box is at the bottom of my website. I'm excited to add more awesome stickers from this awesome community and turn this thing into a glory of, of sweet slaps. Hello, I'm going to paint these doors white. We're gonna hang some lights, finally. Okay, we are gonna test out the cast of these bad boys to kind of see where we wanna mount them. It said we can string up to 15 together. So we probably want it about here. Okay, let's mount the lights. With the help of a lot of lasers and some measuring tape, we attempted to get the lights straight. Oh wait, yeah. we well we should drop it in from the top. Yeah. Okay, we are going to attempt to get this cord through the ceiling. I'm fishing this thing here so Nikki can go up top. Oh, I see ya. We hit that perfectly between two studs. Sick. You got it? Yeah. Got it. Success. Success. These LED lights have three settings from super warm to kind of warm to white. Although I am a little bit bummed to see that they cause flickering in my video footage. Oh well, we're not gonna film a ton in the merch room. Then I installed the AC grate covers and we put the doors back on. Then Ty installed this counter where we can sign shipping documents. Pew, 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 pew. This room is super echoey. So I'm gonna try and like whisper a little bit so it's not as bad, but we have to put rubberized baseboards along the outside of this room. So let us go to the outside. I can't believe we're getting to the finishing details. Uh, this is carpet tiles. And while Miles puts together the LED lights, I'm going to carpet that freaking sweet ass photo booth. Yeah, they're navy blue, the coup. Uh, I'm gonna do what I do. First I vacuumed up all the dust then scraped some gunk off the floor. Then started laying down the carpet tiles. I needed to cut some down so I marked them with a white paint marker and pretty easily sliced them with a box cutter. Oh yeah, get in there. Get in there! I am a god among men! We had a slight issue with the bench. Oh shit, it was a little too wide. 
Somebody didn't measure twice, <laughs> but it does not fit on either side. It is too wide to actually go in the photo booth. So I'm gonna disassemble this, cut off a chunk, reassemble it, and hopefully since this is flush against the wall, I won't have to paint it and varnish it and do all that stuff all over. Look at this messy warehouse. Hurricane Miles done blow through. Austin's working on the French cleats. Austin is gluing the French cleats. Cinder blocks are coming in handy to weigh down the strips onto the back of these backdrops. Yeah. So Miles is still working on the LEDs. I am gonna do some light tests because Polaroids are not known for excellent low light performance. So since we're just doing the test, I don't wanna permanently mount these to the wall. So I'm literally just gonna blue tape these to the wall. Perfectly mounted, very professional. This is the last wire I have to attach before I'm done. So close. Okay, see you guys when this finishes developing. Miles has finished the LEDs. Hopefully they all turn on at the same time. Ready? This is the moment of truth. If I press this button, it should turn everything on. Three, two, one. Woo! Certified hot boy. You're still missing one. That's so sick. Second attempt, turning on the lights. We have more solder failure. Miles is not feeling great right now. Okay, he forgot to plug it in. Okay, good. That's a much better solution. Ooh, there we go. That's so sick, dude. It's like a light waterfall. Let's check out the Polaroid. Oh yeah, that's good lighting. It does look good. That's really good lighting for a Polaroid. Okay, that'll work. Oh my God, we've come so far. Okay, we got door trim going on here. Everything's painted this beautiful white. We've got rubber bumper on the outside, all the way around the exterior perimeter. Inside here, the beautiful lights are looking fantastic. We were worried they weren't gonna be bright enough, but now that we have all 16 in here, it looks great. They swept in here, they mopped in here. It is prepared, it is beautiful. Our lovely window, Ty went ahead and framed this out. It's got a sill. Even our janky electrical boxes. This is funny. These electrical boxes in here were the existing ones that were on that brick wall back there. So we just cut holes and framed them out. We didn't want to rewire the whole thing. Doors are painted, exteriors framed. But now we're just waiting for the carpet tiles to arrive so we can lay down the flooring and finish off this room. We got a whole lot of floor area to cover with these babies. Oh yeah. These are very similar to the ones that we used inside of the photo booth. Hopefully this floor is not too rough. Wow, remember how nasty this floor was when you had to use that scraper to get up all that gunk? What a transformation this is going to be. Okay, first piece down. This is like the easiest install ever. All right, first three pieces down. It's time for some time lapse. This was a pretty big surface area to cover, but this was probably the easiest flooring solution we could have gone with. They had self-adhesive backs and you just had to lay them down one by one, piece by piece, until the floor was done. Now that the carpet was finally in, we could install the door jams, the door trim, and the rubber bumper baseboard all the way around the inside of the room because all three sit on top of the carpet. Freaking hex yes, bro. We got a room. Now this rug isn't doing a whole heck of a lot out here. So I think I might take this rug into the merch room to kind of just add an extra layer of plushiness. Oh my God, the merch room is officially finally done. This has been the most long and convoluted process. This was the first thing we started tackling when we moved in here, a room for the merch operation. And now it is finished and it is ready for the merch. The reason why this room exists is for the merch. So let's start loading it in here and getting this place functioning finally. I know a lot of artists and YouTubers who really love to do print on demand stuff and drop shipping. And I totally get that because it's like the easiest way, no headaches. But I've always loved to order my stuff in bulk, ship it out myself, have the inventory in my hands, being able to inspect it and touch it and check the quality in person. And that inevitably becomes a full operation. We're designing it, having it printed, receiving it, shipping it, handling our customer service. But having this new merch room where all of the garments can stay clean 
and dust free and temperature controlled and safe really puts this warehouse one step closer to becoming the perfect YouTube operation. I just went and bought seven shelves, totaling $685,000 from Home Depot. And uh, Team Awesome is over here assembling them. We are gonna have one swaggy merch room, I tell you what. I tell you what! I'm at Home Depot getting even more shelves. Good morning. Nailed it. Oh my God, it's done, dude. Finally. How do you feel right now? I'm honestly pretty proud of this. Like the fact that we made it in a week is kind of crazy. This is your first piece that you've made not in your driveway? Yeah, it's pretty cool like working inside. I think I've learned like that my capacity for building something in a short amount of time is a lot greater than I expected. And also I learned it's pretty sick to work with other people and have some help. And that's something that I'm not always like the best at is like delegating tasks. So this is it. This is the custom Make With Miles photo booth. Gosh dang it, it turned out so sick, son. It's so sick. Now Miles is a very epic YouTuber and I skipped over a ton of the build. And let me tell you some really interesting build techniques went into this thing. So he has an entire video over on his channel going over the full build of this amazing photo booth. Good golly, Miss Molly. So do yourself a favor, go over to Make With Miles channel and and watch his video. And while you're at his channel, give him a subscribe too. Ding, wink, wink. But there is one thing I wanted to show you. Hold on here. Get this up. The back wall of this photo booth is gonna get covered with Polaroids of anyone who comes to the studio. We're gonna fill this whole wall right here with rad pictures of amazing people who come and visit us here. I don't think this is gonna be in Miles' video because we've taken a lot of pictures since he left. So yeah, go to Make With Miles' channel and check out his video on this photo booth. It's super sick. Ah, oh, what have we here? Finally get to put my Jordan poster up. <laughs> oh, uh, oh yeah. It's going up. And who say he, he ain't the GOAT? I got time today. Michael Jeffrey Jordan, <laughs> the GOAT. That's the inspiration we need to get every single order right. shipped to its final destination. Now, the room is ready. Okay, it's tour time. The front of house is way more empty now. Look at all this space. I can't believe we fit so much merch up here, but this is gonna get swagged out. Over here is gonna be Nikki's office. I have a bunch of furniture and designery stuff to turn this into a much more loungy, chill place. That's gonna be in the next video. Along with Edit Suite Numero Dos, Casa de Nick. The new edit station is coming together really nice. I actually picked up some four terabyte SSDs to increase our SSD cache. We're gonna swap those out. In the new NAS. We've been using it for about two months now. It is working so awesome. I am so happy with that upgrade. We're definitely going to be swagging this room out. I already got some decorative pillows. That is just, it's going to be so decorative. I was thinking right here, we put up a nice like 50 inch flat screen. No, I think we should get a 96 inch neon custom sign that says like Nick rules with like three Z's at the end. I'm down for that for sure. <laughs> we got the last supper over there thinking we might paint this this wall a darker color and hang this here and just have it pop, pop, soon off the wall. When we enter the main room, what have we here? The organization wall is definitely coming along. I think I'm gonna add another section of pegboard. Miles' photo booth, so epic in its new home. And then the lights, the American green lights, it, the lighting in here is just so much better. Beside from filming, beside from the accuracy when painting my art, that yellow fluorescent light just felt oppressive in here and now it feels bright and fresh. So hyped on these lights. Oh yeah, we installed ceiling fans. That wasn't in the video, but uh, those are those are new and they're working. Look at all of our cleaning supplies. Yeah, we made this raggle taggle shelf. I always joked that I was a maid in my past life, so this is just a dream come true. Poor Nikki. <laughs> Welcome to the merch room. It is absolutely jam-packed in here, but I'll tell you what guys, if you ever want to do sound treatment for a room, just fill it with like 10,000 folded garments and it is the best acoustic treatment that money can buy. This is a lot of the Vivid Kingdoms t-shirts and hoodies. And then we have Vivid Kingdoms Gicle prints over here. Vivid Kingdoms 11 by 17s. This is like the hoodie 
slash crew neck outerwear section, some Last Supper puzzles, some Last Supper gicle prints. There's Red with his feet up. <laughs> we got a bunch of tubes over here. Quick grab for shipping out prints, stickers, Red's whole new work area. Red, what do you think of the uh, space? Oh man, this is this is so awesome, man. I got more space. I can do a lot of things. How's the motor on this? It works good. It ain't Close no flexi spot. It ain't no flexi spot, I'll tell you that much. Tons of shirts down this row, tons of shirts down this row. And as we put this together, I was like, man, this place is jam packed. We need some more room in here. So I'm actually gonna have an epic sale right now on my website. We're gonna have discounts on every item on the entire shop. I haven't thought up the sale yet, but I'll list it right here in text at the bottom of the screen. Labor Day's next weekend. And it's Labor Day in the United States. So that's another reason to have the sales. Every single month, a new t-shirt that I design hits the website because I have a t-shirt of the month subscription, which means I designed a brand new t-shirt every single month. So there's always new stuff coming out. So in order to make room for new stuff, we got to sell through some of the other stuff. So there's a sale going on right now. Also, should I just make something up? Not only is there discounts, but if you spend over $40, you will get a free signed mystery print with your order. It's an 11 by 17 print. Those usually go for 25 bucks. So we're going to throw a $25 item in free with your order if you spend 40 bucks on top of the discounts that are going on. Boom, made up the sale on the spot. Let's go. Ah, this is just so much better. This is like literally the perfect space for this. What else do I want to say about the merch room? Nikki? <laughs> Buy the the kingdom stuff. There's just a lot. <laughs> just stocked it all, I want it gone. Okay. Buy it all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this has been such a long journey to put this room together. It's gonna keep evolving, but this is just like making this YouTube studio space so much better and we're slowly inching our way towards the perfect spot. Okay, that's the tour of the new studio. Subscribe, bye. Check out the sale.